Hello, hello everyone, Dasha Hao, and welcome back to my vow to my liege. Now, last time, uh, an old friend of ours helped save us, and we were part of a village, and last time that village was promptly attacked by our enemies. <laughs> and thankfully, we were able to save some villagers, not all of them, but we saved a good chunk. We did good. <laughs> And we went back to our kingdom, and before we left, we talked with our old friend, and our friend was like, Yo, uh, I'm gonna stay here and help the villagers, because after what happened, I need to stay. And then we left, and then he promptly showed up on a tiny boat behind us. <laughs> so, let's continue on where we left off. The boat returns to Nung. Yes. Huzzah! Just as I reached the Ning Palace, the officers on duty stepped in front of me, with over a dozen letters from the envoy of Chi. Gong Su Yi urgently inquired about the princess. I feel guilty when I think of how much longer that trip took than the two days that we had promised. I immediately called for him after a short rest. Also, let me know if the music's too loud or something, because it's a little loud on my end, but I noticed on a couple of streams that things have been very low, so... I didn't anticipate that he would scold me from the get-go. <laughs> My bad. Sorry. Well, guess what? You can report something else to your king. I shoot a look at Wu Zixu. That name's forever gonna get me. This is definitely his doing, and I'm the one getting scolded for it. Wu Zixu stands calmly by my side while completely ignoring Gong Su Yi. We did not anticipate that we would meet a bit there. <laughs> Dang it, as soon as I try to be all formal and everything. <clears throat> we did not anticipate that we would need so much time to treat her, and we apologize for it. Prime Minister, did you not tell Mr. Gongzu that the princess was poisoned? Well, guess what? We brought it back. You can confirm it now. So it is the Prime Minister's fault. After all the things that you've done, maybe. The princess is safe and sound. She is now resting in the back room of the palace. We will take you now to see her. Please, don't be anxious. The poison has already left her body and she will awake after resting for a few days. Well, my bad. Time, time is a finicky thing. Ruguo先生不信我们无国的衣冠，完全可以写信给齐公。当然，希望先生就事论事，别把没照顾好女公子，导致他私自闯入无国寂庙的事，推到我们少君头上。Oh, <laughs> burn. That's like the third, fourth time this guy has been put in his place. Prime Minister, the princess is young and ignorant, and it is only natural that she would want to explore the outside world. I believe that the king of Nung, uh, I was about to sing Nung, the king of Shi is not an unreasonable person and will understand your difficult position, Mr. Gongsu. Gongsun Yi's expression suddenly turns hesitant. It's been a while since I've read some Chinese. Ooh. And he's staying quiet. He knows he got put in his place. He's afraid to say anything else. I don't know. Gong Su Yi is a rash person, but he is not stupid. Look, isn't he bargaining with me now? 
Well, it isn't like we don't have any... Uh, <laughs> fine. <laughs> well, it isn't like we don't have good news. Our initial plan was to establish good relations with the North, but after discovering Xiao Jiang is the owner of the Sacred Dagger, an artifact that is needed to break the Sacred Vow, and something that is hard to come by, the opportunity it presented was far too good to pass up. But this would destroy any chance of happiness in Xiao Jiang's future. Wu Sishu and I look at each other, and I know that even if I don't say anything, he would say it for me. Would Mr. Gongsun please inform the Xi inform the Xi's king of our intentions of marriage while we prepare bridal gifts? After the memorial rituals memor yeah, memorial rituals for the former king is over in July, we will let Xiao Jiang come to Nung. Jeez, every single time I tried to talk as this person, just Ha ha ha. Dai Wu Yi Guan. Jiko Chi Xing Gao Zhu Gong. Bugo Shao Jiang Gong to the Ching Guo. She's fine, don't worry. You can visit her any time. If you need to report this to the King of Qi, then we will have the doctor explain it to you in detail. No problem. Thank you for finally having logic and sense. I send for Yi Guang. Yi Guang comes over to explain things to Gong Su Ying in a simple and clear way. Yi Guang also manages to quell Gong Sun's worry with his sincere and warm personality. Yi Guang is our old friend. Oh, I'm so happy he's here with us. I'm not biased, I swear. I'm not biased. I'm, I mean, look at him. Look at me. <laughs> Yi Guang, you did a good job. Shao Jun, if you are Yi Guang back to Wu Guo, you should follow the king's orders. No, he doesn't. He's fine. He's fine, Prime Minister. He's fine. Hearing that, Yi Guan ignores it, but wears a more serious expression on his face. Shao Jun, I want to go to the Hu Qiu to check the Go right ahead. I'm fine with that. Excuse me for any burps that I have. I have, I have Coke on. <laughs> not, I have Coca Cola on the side. I am shocked at what he said. Wu Sushu does not say a word, but eyes Yi Guan with suspicion. He always eyes people with suspicion. Just stop it. Why, why haven't I not fired him yet? Why haven't I kicked him out of the palace? Yi Guan, are you sure that you want to go there? Oh, baby, thank you. 先生这话说的倒是洒脱，当真是非同凡响啊。I mean, it kind of is ordinary. 多谢相国赞赏。Goodness, this outfit is so pretty. Yi Guan's brazen response leaves Wu Sushu speechless. I had my reservation, but now I'm holding back my laughter. <laughs> Yi Guan has the point. We have just placated, placated the envoy of Qi. So we cannot drag Xiao Jiang into any more dangerous situations. But the crack on the sacred ding concerns me deeply. It's fine, it's fine. Wu Sushu gives me a hand-on-hand -hand salute and shoots Yi Guan a warning look before leaving. Yi Guan cannot help but sigh. Ah, I'd sigh too. I'm sick and tired of this boy's, like, suspicions with everybody. Like, every single person. I'm more protected from your jade amulet than I am by this dude. Oh. <sighs> Are you talking about the Prime Minister? <laughs> he pulls us outside in the dead of winter for a sparring match and locks us up for three days to do paperwork. So we guess we are well protected. Yi Guan only laughs wordlessly without any empathy. Shao Jun, Chen Yao is your guard. Ah, thank you, Chang Feng. Here we go again. 
How many times do we have to chase you back? I'm going to put you back in the infirmary, gosh dang it. If that means I need to punch you and hurt you to go back, I will do that. It's not a matter of the flesh wounds. If Xiao Jian, with all of her magical powers, has been so greatly wounded by the magical ray, how much more taxing it is for a normal person like you? Or how much more taxing it is... Oh, I said that right. Oh, well, It's been a few days since we got back, and you still look so tired. I'll be fine. I'll be fine. Don't worry. Pat, 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 pat. There, there. I'll be fine. No means no. Go back and rest. It's fine. It's fine. See? See? Even he agrees. He agrees. Go back to bed. His puppy dog eyes are working on me. In fact, I suddenly feel guilty if I do not bring him along. No, don't cave in. Don't cave in. Perhaps he sees my hesitation when Yi Guan gives me a wink. I thought you were on my side. You jerk. No. No, I want him to rest. He needs to rest. Poor baby was in like an underworld situation. He needs he needs good time to rest. <laughs> then Then we should all go together. No. They're fine, fine, you can come along too, why not? How about everybody just joins us? Why not? <laughs> single one of you. I'm going out on an official business and not out for a stroll. Fine. Let us be off. Even though we have quite a few people with us, our trip to Tiger Hill is a silent one. Yi Guan is meditating, Chen Feng is trying to heal up, and Gao Jiang did not think did not think he had the right to be in the same carriage as us, and so he was walking on foot outside. <gasps> come on! Get get in the carriage. If you're gonna come along, you're gonna go sit in the carriage with us. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Gao Jiang bids farewell to us when f f bids oh my goodness. My eyes be playing tricks on me right now. Bids farewells to us. Oh. <laughs> when he sees the familiar stone hut. I cannot contain myself when I see his lonely figure walking down that overgrown path and call out to him. Adieu. Gojan hesitates for a bit before coming to a halt. We will not forget the promise that we made with Adzio. 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 Thank you. I give a soft sigh. I'm afraid that I can no longer call him by that name for much longer. I think you can. I think you can. By the time we arrive, Chen Dan, who is informed of our coming, is already waiting for us with a few priests. He even helps me out of the carriage personally. It was. Head priest, today we bring you the miracle doctor. Chen Dan eyes the man behind me with curiosity and a warm smile. Maybe not, because he's 16 and you're like. 23? Oh, poor baby. After that incident, most of Nung's priests and priestesses had died, as the Sheng clan were the most renowned Rena yeah, renown in all of Nung, Zhu, and Yu, the former king invited their heir to become our head priest. Wow, that's a lot of words. 
that you wouldn't have had the chance to meet. 小时候，先父曾带我去拜访过郑家村，因此见过。Oh dang, proving me wrong. 难道？暂下施一光，见过大主。哎呀，真是失礼了。我从小便听说施家是无眼巫主之首，施家少主更是有稀世之才，是登之无愧的天下第一巫主。Two cuties right in front of me. 都是世人过度美化，没那么夸张。You say exaggerations, but you gave me a jade amulet that has protected me for so many years now, without even being near me. Uh, I, I think it, it's not exaggeration. Thank you very much. I think it's not exaggeration. Thank you very much. I think it's not exaggeration. Thank you very much. I think it's not exaggeration. Thank you very much. I think it's not exaggeration. Thank you very much. I think it's not exaggeration. 先生大度，正当何其有幸，居然迎来此等贵客，快请进。It is rare for us to see the head priest praise somebody so much that we are beginning to feel embarrassed. 大柱抬爱，少君，我们直接去封神阵。Where run it? I nod my head and explain things to Chen Deng. Being eager to see the shoes magic, shoes magic. That, that's gonna trip me up. He takes us directly to the sword pond. Just as the cold air from the sword pond rushes up towards us, I glance at Yi Guang. Even though I know that he has accepted the past even more than I have, I am still worried that he might not be able to take the mental and emotional anguish of seeing the place where his clansmen died. But his expression remains unchanged while he stares intently at the place that it is filled with sacred swords. 大主，这剑阵可是郑家的镇气之术。先生好眼力，这里灵气极盛，却不知何故流向混乱。我便以剑结阵，重整气脉，倒向大鼎那里镇压龙神。至今已有五年了。Oh dang! I thought the swords were just mismatched, placed around. Interesting. Yi Guang bows once to the swords, then silently makes his way to the sacred ding, through the path that Sh Chen Dan opens. Chen Dan shoots me a quizzical look, but I can only shake my head. Chen Dan does not know the truth. If he did, would he still want to become Ning's head priest? Oh my goodness! These sentences are tripping me up so much tonight. The magical powers that are escaping from the sword formation are the spirits of the Shu clan. When we failed to king kill the dragon god all those years ago, the head priest, uh, priestess, used her life to seal him in the ding. But before her spell could take full effect, Mage Shun interrupted it and nearly freed the god. It was then that the Shu clan came up with an even better method of sealing the god. A method done better dead than alive. To this day, I still don't know if my father was just desperate and cold-blooded, or if he went mad. Under his orders, the Shu clan was annihilated, and their demise was blamed on an accident that was supposed to have happened while they were moving the ding. The cover story ran so deep that I ended up impersonating my third brother, and took his place as crown prince. While old friends have returned to the palace, tra palace of tragedy, nothing has changed except he and I. 少君，这大鼎何时裂开的 ？I have no idea. The head priest and us only discovered it about a month ago. Hmm.、Huh. I reached out to touch the big crack on the ding's belly in bewilderment. The crack is getting larger and deeper. At first, it was only on the outside, and you couldn't see it from the inside. 刚刚大柱也说，五年前结阵之时灵气极盛，现在却感觉弱了很多。即使为镇压龙神元魂有所损耗，也不至于这么快。Hmm. After some consideration, Yi Guan pulls out a silver thread from his sleeve and attaches it to the ear of the Ding. 
A flash of blue light moves along the silver string as he knits his brows. Like the human sacrificial array, could the Dragon God's followers have already infiltrated below the sword pond? I'll go and have someone investigate this right now. Oh, you're gonna be away from me? Fine. Shi Xian Shang Shou Shi Shou Jun Da Dong Gan Ge, Fan Dong Mei Yi Wu Shu, Shin Zhao Shen Li Liu Xiang Lai Dei Yu Xiang. Shi Yu Fa Wu, Ji Miao Li Cun Zhi De, Ye Bi Wu Gong Do Do Le. Jiu Yu Wo Lai Xie Zhu Xian Shang Ba. Okay, fine. Na Jiu Qing Da Zhu Zhun Bei Hao Fa Wu Hou, Feng Bi Mu Shi San Tian, Qi Feng Qian, Bu Yao Rang Ren Kao Jin Di Mei Shui Zhi De Ru Kao. What do you think, Head Priest? Feng Shen Zhen, 本来就是施家所设，有施先生调查，应该说是事半功倍。守墓护法的事情，尽管交给我好了。Okay, okay. When I think back on my experience in the magical array, I start to break out in a cold sweat. They see my expression and naturally think that it is the cold that is hurting me, and insist that I should go back to the temple. What's up? Exactly, you better freaking listen. Boop. If we have to follow the doctor's orders, so must you. No. Watching you. Shao Jun, I have to bring Yu to you. I'm fine with that. Yi Guan takes the amulet that is dangling from his waist and hands it to me, but I stop him. Oh? If he does so, he would render my resolve useless when I returned it to him. Without the amulet, wouldn't your powers be divided? But... <sighs> fine, fine. Yi Guang nods at me. I take the amulet and bow to the two of them. I'll leave the matter of the seal of the dragon god in your hands. I return to the Nung Palace to find Wu Sushu still working on the backlog of documents. He raises his head to look at me, and seeing that no one else is around, goes back to his work. Shao Jun, Jian Chi, that bit of situation, how? As horrible as ever. <laughs> the crack on the sacred ding is getting wider. Yi Guan said that the divine powers are leaking out, much like Shao Jiang's case. The head priest and Yi Guan both agreed that it would be faster to use their magical powers to investigate it, so Yi Guan will be staying at the sword pond. Don't you say anything. I know he's going to say something. <sighs> Wu Sushu stops his work and looks at me with an unsatisfied expression. What? He's an old friend. He's he's part of the Shh clan. Shao Jun. Chen Yiwei, you will definitely consider Zhou Dao. You put me in danger. Prime Minister, it was you who told us to bring Yi Guang back. So why don't you trust him? Shao Jun, why don't you think about it? Feng Shen Zhen is his father's house. He wants to bring Yi Ru to the enemy. And risk hurting. And risk hurting his old friend and his other friends. No. 
Ah. Oh. We have been trying to tell you that Yi Guang bears no grudge against the kingdom of Nung this whole time. If he hadn't saved us or Xiaojiang, the kingdom of Nung might not be here today. I want to fire this man. I want to kick him out on the streets. According to you, Prime Minister, the world has nobody who is worthy of your trust. Oh, this guy's getting on my nerves. First, you want us to break the sacred vow, then you restrict me at every turn. Must you wait until the Dragon God has escaped before you will give us the authority to act? I will be violent too. Where's my fan? I will throw down my fan too. I have thrown it down. <laughs> ah. Wu Shishu throws his pen violently down, splashing the ink in all directions. He glares at me with so much anger that I thought that he would throw the documents as at me as well. I'm implying that maybe you're the traitor. Dot dot dot. Looking at you. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe I am. I'm not. It is you who has been doubting our judgment time and time again. Are you telling me that you knew where he was all these years and you didn't tell me? Are you saying you were hiding things from me? Huh? He has been living like a hermit at. Jeez, oh, this one always throws me off. Xu Lu Village. You're being really cocky, good sir. Dot dot dot. You're being really cocky. So you were hiding things from me. Now I very much do not trust your loyalty. Dot dot dot. At this point, I don't even care what you said. The fact that you hid things from me is a big no-no. Oh my goodness, are we just going to accept it? <sighs> Yi Guang did not tell us anything about that, but knowing him, that is to be expected. This guy's making me very angry and the story is not going in the way that I like it. Dot dot dot. Why are you being silent? Be more vocal. Exactly what he said. We believe in Yi Guang, so the Prime Minister doesn't need to say anything more. What? What's the word for somebody who's like this? 
person who's always constantly suspicious of things, never trusting, absolutely thinks the worst of everything. Like, bruh, stop. Prime Minister, we are your sovereign. 既然少君固执己见，臣也无话可说。容臣告退。Go, go, go retire. Go, go retire for the night, or go retire for the rest of your life. Wu <sighs> Shishu rolls up his unfinished documents and stalks out of the room. I watch his back, walking further away as I get increasingly furious. Without any other way to vent my anger, I pick up the scrolls on the table and smash them on the ground. I can do that. I did it, but I also made my fan fall. Let me grab my fan real quick. <laughs> <laughs> fan has been grabbed. Ever since that day, Wu Shishu and I will meet at court to discuss official matters in the most impersonal way before coldly parting ways. I'm fine with that. He's been a butt. Under the circumstances, Wu Shishu has a point. Compared to my irrational trust in others, it would be more logical to be wary of them. I don't trust Wu Shishu because he hid shit from us. Oop, my bad. I cussed. I didn't mean to. He hid things from us. <laughs> Wu Shishu might have felt more reassured, more, more reish, more reish. Interesting. If I had not sealed up the mausoleum and let Shendong stay there, that's Yi Guan. But I will not do that. Furthermore, if there is no mutual trust between all involved with this latest incident, we might not, but、uh, we might all be dead by now. And it was the former king's trust in Wu Shishu that helped put the previous king on the throne, and helped him achieve such great accomplishments. If you do what is right, then there should be no need for regrets or apologies. But for all these years, Wu Shishu and I have been mutually supporting and trusting each other. This is the first time that we are giving each other the cold shoulder. I feel terrible about it. Chen Feng. We are going to visit Xiaojiang, and since you are in no condition to go, could you please let the prime minister know? Hmm. Forget it. Please go and see th what the prime minister is up to. No. Although Xiaojiang is not in a fully awake state, she is not fully unconscious either. The maids who are attending to her needs tell me that she will be or that she will do things in a dreamlike state. I said a state, <laughs> in a dreamlike state. At least she won't die from the lack of food or drink. She is probably having a lot of dreams. She would talk in her sleep from time to time, and from the sound of it, it seems like she is having a good-natured banter with someone. I cannot help but smile at the young and carefree girl. The sacred dagger lying next to her is no longer glowing with that strange, eerie light. It just looks like a common dagger now. I hear a sobbing sound behind me, just as I was about to leave. Xiaojiang. Google. She's dreaming about her home and family. I wipe away the tears from the quarter, corner of Xiao Jiang's eyes and lament the fact that a lovely girl like her would look so adorable even when she is crying. I don't know if her brother has read my letter of reply regarding marriage. Xiao Jiang, what do you want, Chang Feng? Is the prime minister still doing well?、Mm. If you want to say something, just say it. There's no reason to hesitate. Xiang Guo 刚刚去城外大营调了一队精锐，前往虎丘了。Oh my goodness! You've got to be kidding me! What? Wu Shishu is losing his mind. Chen Feng, prepare the carriage. We're going to Tiger Hill. What the heck? Although we have our differences, Wu Shishu has never gone against orders or undermined my authority as king. If he did. Then Guo Jiang would have died eight hundred times already. I'm angry and puzzled. He has watched Yi Guan, Chen Feng, and I grow up. So why is he so against Yi Guan? 
When we were about to reach Tiger Hill, I see Wu Shishu leading a troop of soldiers on horseback. Wu Shishu, you dare! Shaojun, Hu Qiu Chu Shi Le. What? What has happened that you know that I do not know? When Wu Shishu hears my voice, he guides his horse to the side of my carriage. Unlike the cold looks he has been giving me lately, his expression now is troubled, which is rare for Wu Shishu. What do you mean? What? What? I look in the direction he is pointing to, and what I see shocks me. What? A thick fog hides the whole of Tiger Hill. The only thing that can be seen is the light that comes from the temple at the top of the hill as it pierces through the fog. Although there are still some ways to go before we get there, our throats are already starting to itch, and our bodies become sluggish. This is not the usual fog. It is more like the miasma of a hidden forest. Took me a moment. I totally forgot what that word was. Chen Qian, the Pai Ren, is Hu Qiu Qing Kuang. Xia Ling, Shi Wu, Ju Xi, all Xu Zhou Ye, every day, Shi Chen, not ceasing to report. The result today, the Jin Tian, Xia Chao, the Chief of the Jia Lao Bing, told me that there was no news to report. 臣就立刻带兵赶来了。Oh, what became of the people who were watching Tiger Hill? 不知道，连守兵都全被隐没在这浓雾里，不知去向了。Hmm. Could the King of Yu be even be? Yu, Yu, it's Yu. Dot, dot, dot. Prime Minister, did you hear that? We heard something similar when we were in the human sacrificial array. It doesn't sound good. Let's go up the hill. No. I sent the people to the wood to see the wood. They went out to the wood to the wood. They felt their own pain. They couldn't get out of the wood. They just went back. Well. Wu Sishu points to the grass along the dirt path, and indeed, there are a few soldiers lying there. Their faces are twisted in pain as they fight for air. So it is my asthma. If the whole hill is like this, then there, then is there no other way to get to the hill? Oh my goodness, to get to the top? Wu Sishu shakes his head. I gaze at the flickering light that comes from the temple through the fog. A light seems as weak as a, or the light seems as weak as a candle flame in the wind. I'm suddenly faced with the indecision of whether to advance or retreat. Smart. That's a good idea. The miasma should not be able to affect the water. We can dive underwater with bags of air to help us get there. Is it the water that was chased by the Long Shen Temple? That depth is enough to hold the water? It's deep enough. We'll be fine. 但现在我们要反着从外向内走，雾中视线不好，又在水里，恐怕要迷路。True. This miasma is unnatural. Waiting will not help. We must go up the hill. 少军说的是，我们带一部分人上去，其余的人回营带增援过来，在安全的地带围住虎丘。现在就开始召百姓回城，瘴气蔓延到山脚，立刻关闭城门。Prime Minister, are you coming with us? Then again, if anything should happen to us, we will need you here to support the kingdom on our behalf. Hu Qiu, if there is a chance, do you have a king? Oh, he's right. I gaze back at Gushu, Gushu, Gushu village from a dist or city. Oh my goodness! <gasps> from a distance, and accept what the Prime Minister said. If the dragon god breaks free from the seal, then I'm afraid that there will be no one left alive in the city. A dozen fearless men volunteered to follow up, follow us up the hill as we made our way to the stream just outside the hill. The banks on both sides of the stream are steep, and the vegetation there is dense, but they help to reduce the miasma on the water. While Chen Feng goes above water to check the direction we need to go in, the rest of us remain underwater where it's safer than expected and use the bags of air when required. Chen Feng, you can't leave the water too long. Did you see it clearly? It's a bit more clear than the right. Then we go left. Shao Jun, we still have to wait for Chen Feng to go. The air brought us is not enough to go the wrong way. 
but we cannot let him do what is beyond him. In any case, let's rely on our intuition. Oh. Wu Shishu immediately pulls me behind him. Chen Fen, like an eagle on the hunt, leaps out of the water and dashes into the forest on the right. Chen Feng is still injured. If there is an enemy... Suddenly, a man's scream can be heard. It stops as abruptly as it started. I rush out from behind the Prime Minister as the soldiers draw their swords. I can see shadows moving inside the miasma, on the opposite bank of the river. Shortly after that, we hear Chen Feng shouting at us with a raspy voice from that direction. What's he doing here? Saying that, he brings out the haggard and weathered Go Jiang. I secretly let out a sigh of relief. It is good to know that Ajia is fine. Ajia? Ajia. Go Jie? Hu Qiu Shan becoming this fool's fool. Is it you who did something? What? Prime Minister. Go Jiang seems to have not taken any offense to what Wu Shishu said as he bows to him. Wait, what? Wu 天亮后，醉臣才顺着河道向山外走，本意就是去通报大王，不料半路就遇见你们了。But but but dead bodies though. Okay, that's good. You are the only one here who is most familiar with Tiger Hill. Please bring us up the hill. 上山，大王，现在山上鬼魅横行，这实在太危险了。we got people, we good. We know, but we need to go up the hill. It's fine. He's not commenting on affairs of the kingdom of Nuh. He wants us to be okay. You don't know how that's right. Shut up. Listen closely. This is bigger than just saving a person's life, but we don't have the time to explain or convince you. Just one word. Go Jiang, do you want to follow us up this hill? Uh, up the hill. Shao Jun. I raise my hand to stop Wu Shu from saying anything else, and use a glance to tell him to keep on leading the men forward. Reluctantly, he shoots a cold glare at Go Jiang before following my orders. Go Jiang clearly feels our resolve. Very well. Lead the way. No. The miasma is even here at the crane stream. I can see a few rotten corpses of animals lying by the water. The stench is so bad that I'm starting to taste bile at the back of my throat. Relying on what little air we have left, we should be able to make it if we run. With wet, bleh bleh, with wet cloths over their noise, noses and mouths, Chen Feng and a few men that I sent with him go into the forest. The sound of breaking branches piercing through the gloomy silence of the fog keeps giving me goosebumps. We wait for them with bated breath. Only when we saw a cluster of fires making their way through the dim and hazy forest did Wu Sushu let the rest of us go ashore. Our clothes are completely soaked through by now, but it helps to protect us from the effects of the miasma. 
The fire from the torch comes closer and closer. Chen Feng is carrying a bundle of wood and making his way towards us when a soldier behind him lets out a scream. From the weak light that is coming out of the fog, we see a few strange human faces coming at us. Reacting in an instant, Chen Feng thrusts the flames at them. Oh, heck no. The strange faces let out an unearthly husky howl before disappearing. Uh, because they are the dead warriors of our kingdom. A group of men rush to Cheng Feng's side. Even if they are Nung's most fearless men, one can easily tell that they are panicking. Wu Sushu takes a burning torse, torch and walks towards the forest. Looking at his back, stirs up something in me. Chen Feng, do you recognize that the miasma around the fire seems to be thinner? Oh. Go Jiang takes another lighted torch and waves it in front of himself. He then pulls off his mouth covering and took a deep breath. Ooh, I didn't know that fog and air stuff could be afraid of fire. Prime Minister! I no. Oh dang, we're causing a forest fire now. I don't think there should be a problem breathing. We should be able to make it all the way to the temple. After causing a forest fire, we shall. <coughs> we take back what we said. The smoke from the fire is getting to us. Oh, heck no. We know. We will now have to rely on ourselves to solve this problem. I look outside of the temple. The parts which were lit... The parts which were lit... Oh my goodness. By the fire are slowly getting darker again. All manner of demons are starting to move in and out of the miasma. The doors of the temple are locked, but it seems that the monsters will be able to break in any time now, as they bang and smash at the door. Chen Feng, you take the things that are burned from the outside, and I will light the fire in the four walls. Hold the fire, do not let them escape. No. Prime Minister, you should have someone else do that. Chen Feng does not look well. Chen is only reading the book when he was reading the book. Please, Shao Jun, be careful. I'm gonna worry about you, shush. Oh my goodness, don't work him to the bone, please. Wu Sushu points to Go Jiang, who is standing some ways away. Shao <sighs> Wu Sushu didn't even bother to glance his way. I can only give Go Jiang a nod and follow after Wu Sushu as he makes his way to the sword pond. The sword pond, which hides the original stone doors, has already been drained of water, and the entrance within has been left wide open. A gust of cold air blows up at us from the bottom of the pond. It seems that the worst has happened. I readied my heart for fear that Wu Sushu will turn back and look at me with blame in his eyes. But he doesn't do that. He just draws his sword as we enter the stone doors with other, with utter vigilance. The candlelight that lights the path leading down seems darker than usual. Could this be my imagination? It seems to take on an, take on an unusually red color, making Wu Sushu's shadow and my shadow appear ghostly. Oh dang. We finally reach the bottom. I take in a breath of cold air. Silver threads lace the whole place like spiderwebs. They interweave between the many secret swords, and at the center, on a platform, sits the Ding. Yi Guang sits motionless in front of the Ding. It is like we are in a dense forest as we use our swords to cut out a path, 
forcing our way through. I walk up to Yiguan and realize that his face is pale and gaunt. No matter how much I call out to him or shake him, he remains motionless like a stone statue. Ah, oh, frick, is he in a trance? When I take a closer look, there are silver threads wound around his wrists. Or wrist, very much like the time when I entered the human sacrificial array. Prime Minister, I think Yu Guan's soul has entered the human sacrificial array in search of the spirit of the Ding. Most likely. I'm afraid so. I'm not sure if the seal on the god has already been. Yi Guan says that the strength of the seal has been slowly sapped away, and this did not just occur in the last few days. Don't say that with such a cocky smile, my dude. It doesn't matter if you believe Yi Guan or not. Our top priority should be to bring back Yi Guan's soul and to wake him up so that we can find out what has happened here at Tiger Hill and the Sword Pond. Uh, I have no idea. We went into the magical array when we were at Su Liu village. So let us go and bring him back. You're maybe, maybe, maybe you are. We were successful then. This time will be no different. Besides, in order to protect us, Yi Guan put some of his powers in this amulet. If we can return his power to him, he will definitely be able to bring us out of the magical array safely. <sighs> if they wanted to trap me, they could have done that before. My minister, is this really the time to be doubting Yi Guan? Do you want us all to die? Things were happening before we found him. Come on. Wu Shushu, enough! It is better for us to die here than for us to be manipulated forever by you. I push Wu Shushu away and clench my fist around the silver string that connects Yi Guan and the sacred ding and pull across it. An apparition of a big fish jumps out of the amulet. I always get like Disney Channel vibes with a little... By the time the pain in my chest subsides, the scene before me has already changed. I find myself on a city street with buildings and fog all around me. Chapter 8 City streets and buildings surround, sh sh shrouded, my bad, shrouded in fog appear before me. While it looks the same as a real city with its elegant buildings lined up in a row, there is no sign of life in them. I turn to the empty streets and take a deep breath before yelling out. Yi Guang! Yi Guang! Where are you? Yi Guang! I have this feeling I've been here before. The city is too big. It seems to be many times bigger than the streets of yeah streets of Gushu City, and a hundred times more complex. Time does not seem to flow in this place. That is, uh, that is a void of life. Although this is a world in one's consciousness, it is too lonely. More undead soldiers! Yay! Suddenly, the cry of an undead soldier scares me into a run. It is a good thing that there is a narrow alleyway which I can quite quickly hide in. Bye bye. Those soldiers with half riding bodies are wandering up and down the streets as they occasionally let out a strange howl. No, thank you. I gladly don't want to be seen by you. They look left and right, as if searching for something with those empty eye sockets as their numbers keep increasing. How did this happen? Finding a flight of stairs, I secretly ascend it only to come face to face with the familiar scenery. 
Heck no. The gigantic city gates stand in the distance as the city walls stretch out endlessly on each side. Just outside the city gates, the roar of a wild animal can be heard along with the sounds of beating and tussling. This brings me back to the time when I was saving Xiaojiang, with the exception that I'm now already inside the city. Is this the same city? Or is it just a similar city? I size up the city at a, at a glance. It is hard to tell where the center of the city is. On top of that, there are even more undead soldiers now. If there is anyone fighting outside the city gates, it just might be Yi Guang. I avoid the undead soldiers as I make my way towards the city gates in the west. <laughs> Oh, heck no. Oh, heck no. Sickly cat? What's he mean? From the top of the tall city gates, I stretch my neck out and look down to see that the sickly cat that they were referring to is an enormous white tiger lying outside the city gates. At the moment, the white tiger is under the feet of a fearsome monster that half resembles a cow and half resembles a bird. Its whole body is covered in wounds through which the evil aura of the enemy enters. The tiger grasps it like, or er, grasps, or er, gasps, my, my goodness, I apologize. The tiger gasps like it's drawing its last breath. Please don't tell me that's Yi Guang. Countless undead soldiers swamp around the two beasts and stream in through a crack in the city gates. No wonder the number of undead soldiers are increasing. What? I clutch my forehead as the scene before me incites a certain memory I have from five years ago to resurface. Perhaps it is because of the dream I had that all the long-forgotten details have become crystal clear. Just before the dragon god was sealed in the sacred ding, the head priestess called forth a tiger from the ding. Could this white tiger be the spirit of the ding? Just like Xiao Jiang's dagger has been the spirit of the phoenix? When I went into the magical array to save Xiao Jiang, I wondered the same thing. What is this city that the dragon god's followers have been laying siege to? Is the white tiger guarding the city gates like the phoenix? <gasps> Hello, Miri. Hello. I hope you're having fun. I'll be here just looking, but finally can catch a stream. Thank you. Don't mind me. Oh, hold on. There we go. Now my emotes back to normal. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yes, we are already on the second chapter of the stream, so we'll probably be going on for maybe 30 minutes more, sadly. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> but I hope you're enjoying it so far in my horrendous talking today. It's been a bit of a challenge but anyway <laughs> could it be that the city that the tiger and xiao jiang's phoenixes were guarding are one and the same no 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 you're doing great it's only fun. oh thank you thank you i'm trying i'm trying real hard <laughs> i glance at the city behind the gates with surprise as the thought dawns on me i suddenly feel as if something is awakening in that thick fog ready to pounce at the drop of a hat uh, it knows it's me. With a roar from the monster, the undead soldiers start to scale up the wall, getting closer to where I'm hiding. Oh, heck no! I'm defenseless and unarmed here. The only thing I can rely on is the amulet. I can only retreat to the towers of the city gates to hide. To call it a tower of the city gates is somewhat of a misnomer because it is a big, or it is as big and as for uh, oh my goodness, as fortified as a palace. Inside is a hut. <laughs> Inside is a hall with chains that dangle down from the top of the pillars. Upon closer inspection, I see that the chains are all connected with strange, sol uh, solidified magical letterings, and they go further into the hall. That was loud. The monster outside the city gate starts trying to bang them down. The ground beneath me trembles as it numbs my legs. Above me, the sound of rattling chains echo in all four corners of the hall. A gust of wind brushes past me as a heavy ch er, me as a heavy chain now lies at where I was standing. I break out in a cold sweat. 
I was almost made into minced meat from that chain. <gasps> you Guan? You Guan? I, I was just saying that. You Guan? In the middle? Oh my goodness. I'm on my way. I take off running towards the center. The chains start to rattle again and the sound of it rings in my ears. I am taken back when I find Yi Guang. He's chained up. The more he struggles to break free, the tighter his bounds get. The magical letterings hold the chains together. Uh, uh, the, the magical letterings... Oh yeah. Uh, holding the chains together glows a bright blue. Oh, you got it, you 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 pretty little man. Oh, he's wearing a lot more now. How did you get chained up in here? And where's the head priest? No. No. Okay, so the the thing that he said before it was also for this one. I mean, I mean, I'm into that, but like, n not in this kind of sense. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce that. Xiongqi? Uh, Xiongqi? Yeah. It's the Xiongxi, the monster that hurt the white tiger. Oh, heck no. So the city that the white tiger is guarding is the Ding of Virtue. So it means that the city that Xiao Jiang and her phoenix were protecting was the sacred dagger? I become even more anxious after confirming my suspicions. To think that the human sacrificial array has expanded this, its influence this far. Now, only Yi Guang can turn the tides. What should I do to free you? I don't remember how I did that. Oh, goodness gravy. This tremble was especially, er, yeah, especially violent, and sounds of falling chains continued to ring out with sounds of wooden beams breaking. I'm gonna worry about you. Forget it! Hold on! I viciously bite into my finger, and from the wound oozes out a golden light. As I reach for the chains, the spell seems to come undone. Yi Guang and I look at each other with surprise and elation. Oh heck yeah, magic. Suddenly, all the doors of the tower burst open as countless undead soldiers start to swarm in. Some of them are crushed by the falling chains, but even more are crushed under the stampeding hordes of their comrades. Like ants, they come flooding into the center of the hall. Oh heck. Yi Guang, can you use the silver string here? Have the amulet. Or hand it over. <laughs> hand it over. I feel for the string in the palm of Yi Guan's ice cold hand. Although I have my groaning doubts, I know that the tower cannot take another tremor. There's no time to think about it. Yi Guang, grab onto the string. I wind the string around my hands tightly and gash my teeth as the string cuts the back of my hands to the bone. Come on, let's do this. My golden blood flows freely from my wounds and on the chains. The magical lettering of the chain starts to give out a blinding light and disappear in a flash. Heck yeah. Whoa, what the? An earth shattering bang breaks out as one of the walls collapses. Debris flies everywhere, knocking down the undead soldiers, soldiers that were slowly encroaching upon us. Two black horns appear from the hole in the wall. The evil aura is entering. It's the Cheng Cheng Chi. Cheng Chi. My goodness. I endure the pain as I retreat and bump it to Yi Guang. He is already freed from the chains and is now breathing deeply with his eyes closed. Yi Guang, what do we do now? 
Why are you smiling? Oh, does he have something up his sleeve? He looks straight at the terrifying beast as he brushes past me. I rub my eyes in disbelief. Yi Guang is wearing a gentle, yet scary smile. Even if he has the conf confidence to win over the Chong Chi, Chong Chi. Oh my goodness. This is not the time or place to be smiling. Yi Guang, you. Oh my goodness. Are you actually betraying me? Please don't. Please don't. You're very beautiful. Please. Please don't. Yi Guang stretches his hand towards the Chong Chi. And the beast bows his head so low that it touches the ground, like an obedient dog. Yi Guan climbs over the beast's head as he smiles from ear to ear. <gasps> no! Nan Dao Nishome Xiang Guo, this is Shi Yi Guan and Long Shen Xing to her mother's shen jing ma. He's right. He was right all along. Ah? <laughs> uh? No! I was gonna go for Yi Guang too! But they things were happening beforehand, before he came. Oh my. <laughs> Wait, what? Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. That tiny feeling of doubt now stirred such overwhelming, overwhelming feelings of disbelief and outrage that my heart could barely take it. The drumming in my ears was so loud that I didn't know if I'm the one who was talking, or the one who is talking, or if it's someone else. You... Are you not going to protect the city? If the Ding of Virtue is destroyed, then the Kingdom of Nung will have no chance of survival. No... Do you not remember the promise you made to me in Sulua village? No. No words come from my trembling lips. Yi Guan laughs and waves at me as the Shengxi spreads its wings. I feel like my world is falling apart all around me. I cannot move, and it's probably in that instant that the roof collapses on me. I hear a roar as I see debris falling, and my vision goes black in a blink of an eye. The walls have fallen, and I along with it. Oh. Suddenly, something catches me in midair. I open my eyes. It is the big, pale green fish that rolls me up in its big tail. It brings me some place outside the city gates and gently puts me down on the ground. Out of the dust and smoke that is blowing around me emerges a man with his long sleeve fluttering in the wind. With a wave of his hands, the magical letterings that were scattered all over the tower ruins merge into one thick chain that binds Yi Guang and his Xiaoqing just as they were about to swoop down on me. But right before I can let out a sigh of relief, the incoming waves of undead soldiers that make me shiver come swarming towards the half-open city gates behind me. The man quickly weaves a big, a bit there, weaves a big net spell to cover the gates up just in the neck of time. He has, once again, managed to block the threat. I look at the man, and then the big fish that is still swimming around me. In my confusion, alarm bells start to ring in my head. That man is also... Yi Guang? You oh, uh, okay, this one's not wearing as fancy stuff, and the last time we saw him, he wasn't wearing super fancy stuff. So I think this one might be the Yi Guang. Oh, thank goodness! Oh, thank goodness! I felt so distraught for a moment there. I was like, no, no. Oh, I, I was thinking maybe, maybe it's not actually Yi Guan or maybe he was like being controlled or something. But then he, he replied saying it only took a couple of words for me to trust him. And I was like, no, it has to be Yi Guan then. Oh, I'm so thankful. 
Thank you! <laughs> Yi... Guang... How did this... Chongqi被烧的是龙神，他窃取了我的形貌，骗你为他解开封神阵。为什么我就不是真正的十一光？狐王灭我全族，与我有血海深仇，我凭什么要为仇人效力？我……我……啊！别挑拨离间。I mean. I got two of you right in front of me. I don't know how to feel about that, but, um... Yummy. <laughs> the Iguan, who is right beside me, tightens up the chain that is in his hands. The man astride on the Chu... Chongqi, that looks exactly like Iguan, thrusts his head back with laughter. I mean... I mean, the, the quote-unquote other Iguan is the one that came with the fish, and the fish is... His staple. So, uh, I'm gonna trust the other Yiguang. It seems that the army of undead soldiers outside the city gates have all received a command from the man as they turn and march in our direction. A flash of light emits from the silver strings that are in Yiguang's sleeves. This causes the debris to fly at, at the undead soldiers. <laughs> you got that. With a leap, he flies up behind me and urges the big fish under us to go through the spells on the big net as we barge our way into the city. Behind us, we can hear the chong, chong chi roar, and it is accompanied by the sounds of manacle laughter. <laughs> no. 有锁链和皱纹，龙神暂时追不过来的。让我看看你的胳膊。Yes, sir. I will give you my arm. I will give you my body. I will give you my all. Yi Guang carefully takes a look at the wounds that are on the that are on. Oh, I think they missed a word. On the back of my hands and fingers, which continues to bleed out golden light, he touches it gently, and the wounds, gra wounds gradually disappear. Compared to the bastard who brushed past me without a care for my well-being, this man before me, with his doctor-like compassion, is more like the close friend that I know. Are you really Yi Guang? <laughs> Oh, baby, okay. I'm sorry. Because I believe that bastard's words, I made a grave mistake. Yeah. You don't have to comfort me. I'm the biggest idiot for not recognizing who I was dealing with. What can I make amends? Hecky. So this is indeed the human sacrificial array? Oh,你既然猜到这里形势凶险，为何还要进来？这个血迹阵是为夺取得顶之力而设。you did not respond when I called you, and you even coughed up blood. If you were me, you would also come to save me, right? Yeah, me, me. Yi Guang gives me a helpless and vexed look, but I detect a feeling of happiness in his bitter smile. Oh, they be coming, they be coming. Suddenly, the sound of thunder comes from outside the city walls. The undead soldiers who were frolicking towards the city walls start their search. Took me a moment there. Yi Guang quickly orders the big fish to go back into the amulet and pulls me into a small alleyway. The roads in this town are very confusing. Where are we going? 
Which woman? We're going back? Back to the city gates. We've just escaped from there. Okay. The spirit of the sacred artifact obeys only the command of its rightful master. Will it follow us? True. Xiao Zheng also defended the city with her life. A thought just occurred to me. If the battlefield outside the city gates is the magical array, wouldn't it make the city inside the city gates the body of the sacred dagger and the sacred ding? So the spirits of the sacred artifacts are protecting the powers of said, of said artifacts? No wonder the Dragon God's followers have to use the magical array to forcefully take over the city and weaken the artifacts' powers so that the Dragon God... That's a lot of words! So that the Dragon God can break out. But I broke those chains. But the security at Tiger Hill is very tight, and it is only today that something happened. How could the Dragon God's followers come close enough to the Ding of Virtue to mess with the spell? Yeah, something happened. There's a miasma outside. The whole hill is covered in miasma, and the troops that were stationed there have become the undead. Even the temple is empty. Which now makes me wonder, where is the head priest? We asked the Dragon God, Yi Guang, where the head priest is, and we didn't see the head priest at the temple in the real world. Where is he? Excuse me, what? Those heartless bastards. If I find out who... I cannot continue with that train of thought. To be able to pull off something like this with the Ding of Virtue and use the human sacrificial array on Tiger Hill, there definitely has to be a mole. But I'm reluctant to think who that traitor might be. Or who that traitor could be. It better not be the head priest. Oh my goodness. That's the last thing I need is another turnaround to turn to find out that someone I care about is actually bad. <laughs> Yi Guang pats me on the shoulder. I don't feel safe without a weapon. Yi Guang. Can you use my spiritual energy to form a sword? <sighs> it's fine. I need a sword. <laughs> but before I can finish my sentence, a pale green jade sword has already appeared in Yi Guang's hand. Gosh dang it. After the tower collapsed, a large amount of debris and rubble lies outside the city gates. The net of spells that was keeping the undead soldiers at bay has almost disappeared, but the main forces have already broken into the city via the half-opened gate, leaving a few soldiers wandering about the rubble outside. Yi Guang and I make sure to avoid them as we make our way towards the city gates, but the area is completely exposed. Once we go through, we might not have any place to take cover in that barren wasteland. Suddenly, we could hear scraping sounds coming outside the city gates. We slowly and cautiously take a peek and spot the velvety fur of a big tail swaying across the dirt floor. This tail must belong to the white tiger. However, after seeing its body full of wounds from the evil Aura's attack, I cannot find it in me to laugh. I vividly re recall the image of the phoenix getting burnt. Excuse me. Excuse me again. Oof. It shows just how terrifyingly powerful the Dragon God is. Even the monsters that arise from this 
and his evil aura are also powerful. The white tiger becomes aware of our presence and gives a low growl. Shush, tiger. We don't want the others to know that we're here. Shush. Like approaching any animal, Yi Guang puts his hand out as he slowly walks towards it. The white tiger sniffs at his hand, and his amber eyes suddenly glow with a faint golden light. Oh heck. Hearing this, the white tiger bears its fangs at us. Although it does not have any intention of attacking us, it is clear that it does not have any intention of leaving this place either. I know that you need to protect the city gates, but even with our combined powers, we would not be able to defeat our two biggest enemies. If we fight them here and now, it would only result in the Dragon God taking away all our powers. We should leave now and come back again once we have gathered enough strength with the spirits of the other artifacts to take back the city. When the white tiger hears my voice, it raises its head and takes a sniff at me. A pink tongue comes at me and I fear I will be bitten. Instead, I am drenched in saliva as the bumps on its tongue makes a mess of my hair. When Yi Guang sees my awkward and disheveled appearance, he cannot help but laugh. <laughs> 我曾听阿娘说,河里将得顶送到寂庙的时候,他见到过虎形的魂魄绕着河里蹭腿亲近。看来,他对吴王都很有好感。Maybe it'll listen to me then. Yes. I also remember a time when I was young, and when Tiger Hill was called Hai Yong Hill, how young? Yeah, how young hill. So the reason that it is now called Tiger Hill is because of this fellow here? So, White Tiger of the Ding, will you accept our proposal? The White Tiger looks at the city walls and relaxes its tense body as it nuzzles its head against me. Hmm. <laughs> Ooh, that sounds interesting. Sure. I, of course. Of course, of course, of course. Then, the sound of thunder explodes from the sky as the chains shatter into many pieces and crash onto the ground. The Dragon God and his Cheng Chi, Cheng Chi <gasps> have finally broken free of their sa of their shackles. Yeah, yeah, I, I mean, maybe. The Dragon God rides on the Cheng Cheng Chi's back and looks down at us with such disdain, like looking at a bug that is about to be stepped on. I shoot Yi Guang a look as he continues composing the magical array while standing in the middle of it. We need more time. You sure are a cowardly bastard to impersonate someone else. Oh, frick. <laughs> Probably shouldn't have badmouthed him. After I expose his lies in front of him, the Dragon God stops trying to aggravate me by pretending to be Yi Guang. With a light tap of his finger, the Cheng Qi, the Cheng Qi, grows wings and flies straight at me. Suddenly, a white light flashes before my eyes. It is the white tiger knocking the Cheng Qi aside. The dragon god uses this opportunity to take the evil aura from the Cheng Qi and turns it into a black sword before using it to stab at the white tiger. Oh no, 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 no! I would never have thought that when I deflected the black sword with my jade sword, my sword would give off such a bright light that it would cut through the evil aura of the black sword, shattering it into millions of pieces. You have no right to call me by that name. The dragon god's smile grows even wider as the evil aura from his body slithers towards me. Although the white tiger took the brunt of the attack for me, it is in no condition to fight. The evil aura just continuously. Oh no, he caught on, he caught on. 
，打打打一卡了。瞧瞧你这可怜样，殊不知施一光就和他那个冷酷的母亲一样，就算心爱之人死在面前，也会先顾着完成使命。No. Shut up. The dragon god seeks to spread his deceit in our minds. I rise, well, rise. I raise my jade sword to give my arm a deep slash. My spiritual energy rushes out from the wound as it scatters, as it scatters all over the blade and transforms the entire sword into a large, pale green fish. I summon the power of heaven. So painful. The seal on my chest is hurting dreadfully. Ah. 你再这么浪费魂力，恐怕只会提早完成我们的盟誓啊 ！Frick, sacred vow. My only sacred vow is. We summon the power of heaven to slay the dragon god, to be a shining example of virtue to all mortals, and to break the sacred vow. As I chant the spell, the body of the big fish starts to emanate a dazzling glow. It aggressively rolls the Zhengshi on its tail, and the evil aura that was persistently attacking the white tiger disappears. The dragon god is fearful of the spell as he turns into a black mist and enters into the body of the Zhengshi. The body of the Zhengshi starts to grow as it escapes the grasp of the big fish. A few silver strings fly out from behind me and catch a hold of the Zhengshi's horns. Zhen Cheng. We bought enough time. The white tiger becomes a beam of white light and disappears into the body of the big fish. Yi Guang then carries me onto the back of the big fish with the help of the silver string. With a furious roar from the Chengshi, the rickety city gates collapse on top of the monster. The only sensation I am aware of is the sound of the wind blowing in my ears and the shocking sounds of thunder which hurt my head. A white light seems to cover over everything. Oh, thank goodness we're back. Oof. Xiao Jun. I look at the people in front of me through my blurry vision. My chest feels like it is being crushed by a boulder. I wish to speak, but I feel like there is something thick and sticky choking me. I'm not gonna say. I'm. I'm not gonna comment on that. <laughs> it isn't until someone hits me in the back that I manage to spit out a mouthful of black blood. With that, I am saved. <coughs> Minister, <coughs> where's Yi Guang? Quick, pull! Run! What? Oh frick! Yi Guang carries me and leaps out of the sword formation in a flash with Wu Shishu. In the next instant, a loud bang can be heard from the altar behind me. The sacred ding suddenly splits apart, along with all the silver strings and the chains that are all around it. The ding, once shiny and gleaming, has suddenly become like an antique that has just been unearthed, rusty and dull. I shudder. The lingering fear of almost being killed by the explosion is now replaced with an even bigger terror. I look at Yi Guang and Wu Shushu as they stare at the sacred ding with pale faces. Shi Yi Guang, this is what happened. I am assuming the dragon god most likely escaped. Um, <laughs> I've got bad news. <laughs> bad news, all right.、Uh, I'd say dreadful news. Wu Shishu now pales even more, but he doesn't lose his composure. From the other side of the passageway that leads out of the sword pond comes a disturbing noise. The soldiers that were guarding the outside have all come into the bottom of the sword pond. 受军恕罪，驱赶瘴气的火堆都被瘴气吞掉了，瘴气内那些妖魔还啃坏了门窗，臣只能带大家往通道避难。Oh heck, we're stuck in a corner. You did well. Bring everyone to this side of the magical formation. Yi Guang. As Yi Guang chants his spells, a dozen clear spring, yeah, springs burst from the ground in the sword formation. From the springs comes water swords that fly towards the miasma that is entering through the passageway. Within the miasma come screams and cries of unseen monsters. 
things unseen seem more scary than things that can be seen. The pain is excruciating. It feels as if my head is being squeezed. All of my five senses seem to be greatly impaired. One is only able to express their biggest fears when their bodies can take it. <laughs> Excuse me? Who was that? Please don't tell me it's the high priest. Please don't tell me it's the high priest. Our worst fears have come true. The dragon god is free from the ding. Heck. I clutch the amulet in the palm of my hand and take a few deep breaths before holding back Wu Sushu and Chen Feng. Do not act rashly. The dragon god is not someone who can be defeated by just anybody. No. Was it you? No. Oh, thank goodness. He's just... Wait, no, wait. Wait. This could be a trick. It could either be the dragon god taking his face, or it could actually be him. I, I don't... I'm not trusting it. You inhuman beast. You are still borrowing someone else's face. Fool me once. Shame on me. Fool me twice. Shame on you. Oh, thank goodness. Thank goodness. It's not actually the head priest. Thank goodness. But then where's the head priest? Where is he? We haven't seen him yet. Oh my goodness. His cunning smile is just like Sun Dang's. And for some reason, it's making my hair stand on end. <gasps> Are you hiding more from me? Well, we just... Huh? Wait... Did Tsundan die and the dragon god take over his body? He just made a comment about the being called a beast, so I, I'm assuming he is the dragon. Huh? Yi Kuang, what do you mean? <gasps> <gasps> what? I impossible. Impossible. I personally saw you get trapped in the sacred ding. Chen Dan only smiles. To think that our many years of trust would be destroyed in just a few minutes. Chen Dan smile only be bellies, be bells, mockery, and glee. I don't know that word. Wu Sushu speaks up with reproach before I can. He is infuriated not only by the fact that Chen Dan has betrayed him, but for a man so cautious, the Dragon God's actions have made him look like a fool. No. When Chen Dan rises his hand, the monsters and miasma that were blocked by the water swords in the passageway suddenly come flooding in like water through a breaking dam. 
Oh, frick. Don't worry. I can still move. I use my sword to pull myself up. Although fear and shock are still lingering in my mind, I'm still the king of Nung. As, and as such, I have vowed to avenge my people and to break the sacred vow to the dragon god. I cannot fall now. Excuse me, I'm not the one scurrying through cracks of dings to try to break free. You are the cockroach, good sir. Oh, dang. New art. That's pretty. <laughs> With a flick of Chen Dan's hands, the miasma's black smoke turns into a rain of arrows that flies towards us. Was this new art? Or have I... I don't know. No, this has to be new art. By manipulating the silver strings, Yi Guang stands in front of us with his invisible barrier. Suddenly, a hiss resounds around us. It is the black arrows hitting the invisible barrier and disappearing in a puff of black smoke. This does not seem to perturb Chen Dan. Oh, excuse me. Oof. With a look of youthful innocence, he creates more black arrows as he commands the monsters to bite the silver strings. He smiles happily as he stands and watches our pathetic struggles against the situation. Yep. Chen Feng rushes to cut off the withered claws that is latching onto me. Even someone who is as proficient in martial arts like him would tremble from this prolonged exertion. Well, there's not much we can do at the moment. What are you waiting for? I toss the amulet towards Yi Guang. The amulet starts to glow as the bottom of the pond fills with a refreshing, cool breeze, and the clear water rises up to our ankles. Ah, oh, heck yeah, let's go! From Yi Guan's graceful movements, a dozen water a, bleh, a dozen water swords are summoned, and they fly right at Chen Dang. Chen Dang easily dodges the oncoming swords with a smug air of superiority, but the water swords do not lose their forms even after failing to land a hit. Instead, they change their trajectory and fly at the sacred ding and break off all the chains. This is the first time that Chen Dang fails to laugh. <gasps> smart boy, smart boy. Oh dang, look at his eyes. Look. You got it. The sacred swords around Yi Guang starts to fly out from the ground and into Chen Dan, who is about to seize the Ding. Chen Dan tries to call forth the black mist to block the swords out, but the black mist has thinned out quite considerably. I suddenly come to the realization that his escape from the Ding has greatly weakened him. In addition to that, he has lost his supply of power from the Ding and is now at the end of his rope. The youth in front of me is no longer my kind and friendly head priest, nor is he the fearsome beast I saw at Lake Tai. He is now a common demon. The demon meets my eyes and suddenly breaks into a cold smile. I suddenly feel a strong gust of wind as a gleaming sword rushes at me. Oh frick, the seal on my chest is aching like I have been stabbed in the heart. My hands and legs are numb, and while there is a sharp ringing in my ears, I can only see the gleaming sword flying fatally closer and closer. Oh. Oh, no! No! Just as I am falling, I feel the arms of someone carrying me securely. Although it feels like the strength can break me, it feels warm and gentle. I open my eyes to see a pair of eyes aflame with passion in the dimness around us. No! I'm... I'm still alive. Michelle. Ah! <laughs> the battle is still ongoing. 
你杀死。我可不能看到你死。He smiles at me, but his smile is weak, and his face is pale. No. 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 I'm gonna cry. No. <laughs> no. I take a deep breath, and just as I am about to push Go Jiang away and stand up, my hands touch a wet spot on his chest. His body goes limp. As his head hits my shoulder, I can see the other half of the sword is lodged in his back. My vision goes black, and I can only hear myself screaming with grief. I apologize for any peakness that is about to happen. Ahja! I hope my mic picked that, but at the same time, I hope I didn't bust your guys' ears. With a wave of his hands, Yi Guang flings threads of silver strings out of his sleeves to grab a hold of all the swords that are flying around and swing them onto the ground. In the midst of the clanging of swords against swords, the sacred swords start to emit a pale green, ghostly light. They fly and gather towards Yi Guang's hand that is holding the amulet. <laughs> The amulet finishes absorbing the spiritual energy as Yi Guang tosses it. It then turns into a large pale green fish, like the moon behind a thin layer of clouds, bright and ethereal. Just as it was about to hit Chen Dan, it appears like a dream with a blink of an eye. Chen Dan is caught off guard as he is flung into the onto the rocks of the cave. He coughs out a mouthful of black blood. He wipes the corners of his or corner of his mouth and starts to laugh out loud. <laughs> Gotta be kidding me. Catch him! Wu Jia Xiao Mei, you 记住，死，绝对不是最好的惩罚。Saying that. Chen Dan's body becomes like a piece of paper getting torn apart. The black mist around him starts to grow, and he longs to become a large, golden white dragon. It isn't as big as the one I saw at like Lake Tai. As he escapes from the bottom of the spirit pond or the sword pond, the miasma and monsters also seem to retreat, like a fierce storm. The odd cries and icy winds follow up, follow him up into the sky. I hug the bloodied body of Adia. This loss pains my heart to the point of it being unbearable and faint, or and I faint. This evil deed that you've done today will be avenged a thousand times over. Death is indeed not the worst punishment. <gasps> I 
I wake up abruptly as Chen Feng helps me up. Even though he's trying to hold back his emotions, his eyes are still very red. Water. My voice is like sand or er, yeah, my voice is like sandpaper as a cup is handed to me. I look up to see Wu Shu. For that man. Ah. Ah. I'm happy now. I'm fine. <laughs> My anxious heart starts to relax little by little. Everyone is fine. How long have I been asleep? How about Yi Guang? Yiguang回虎丘了，他说少君只是魂力损耗过度，其余人也只是轻伤，他留在蜈蚣没多大用处，不如在虎丘调查正在留下的东西，再为剑池重新布阵。少君不用担心，夷光应该不会做没把握的事情。My minister, you are not worried. 事到如今，吴国和少君都得依赖是夷光。臣怀疑他还有什么用？ He's come to his senses. He's come to his senses. Thank you. Actually, when I was in the dark array, the dragon god borrowed Yi Guang's appearance to trick me into freeing him. It was then that I remembered your warnings and fears. He did. What is Chen Dan's background? How did my father, the king? Chen Ju Diao Chakuan. Da Ju. Chen Dan Ju Wu's time, Bi Zhi Qian Gaoji's time, was late. Chen Jia is a Wu Jia Dynasty. Chen Dan, as a Zhu Zhong Shao Zhu, has already made a name in the East. Can't be. It's just that late day. 真正的正旦，很有可能被龙神取代了。Ah,、oh, that's a little saddening. We never got to meet the real Chen Dan. Dang. Person we've known for five years wasn't even the real guy. Dang. No wonder he could not recognize Yi Guan at that time. 五湖龙神是千年精怪，凡人识不破，才是理所应当。But was the dragon god not trapped inside the ding at that time? How did he manage to do something like this? 余光猜测，应该是龙神趁着当年移鼎时封印不稳，偷偷分出一缕残魂，逃出了鼎外。Oh, that that was a cut off noise. I don't know what happened there. Chen Sui 不懂神鬼之事，但也明白，善守者藏于九地之下的道理。所以他的残魂，选了我们意想不到的人下手。吞噬正旦，不仅可以得到续命之力，还能接近大鼎，滋养诸神师所受的重创，养精蓄锐，破除封印。更对我们的动向，也能了如指掌。如果不是敌人，这胆色和城府，简直值得佩服。
Also, I just realized I'm covering a, li a little bit of the words. I hope it isn't too much of a problem. The only thing that is being covered is the end... Not even the end of mention, but the actions and I. But I think that's kind of assumed. <laughs> let, me, let, let, let me know if it's... If I'm blocking too much, I can always move myself down a little bit. But the Chung clan is also renowned in their own magical fac factions. And have relatives in Gushu, I want to say village, city. How come no one realized that he was the dragon god in disguise? Shao Jun Zan Zhi, Zheng Jia Jiu Shi Wan Quan Qing Bai Da. Are you telling me everybody was in a coot? My minister is going to say that I am being cr 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 credulous, credulous, again. Um, Tianxia的一屋的名声地位，谁不想要？想不劳而获走捷径的人，比比皆是。凤妖魔求功名富贵者，也有的是先例。少君是拿君子之心去夺小人之腹。Are you saying that there is no one righteous person in the Chung clan? Bieshu Junzi Danfan Busha Moshin Shang Zi Chandin Dobun Liu Huoko Yi Rong Ju Rong Yi Sun Ju Sun That cowardly bastard to play around with human lives is just too detestable. Shoji Yigavan Tai Hoi Dian Bita Jido. Tengfeng, you do not look so good yourself. Is the poison from the miasma still affecting you? I'm fine now. You should go and rest. Don't even think about entering my chamber if you do not sleep for the next day. Oh, he's so cute. He's worrying about us. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. Pet, pet, pet. It's okay. After Cheng Feng has left, I take a gander at Wu Sushu's gloomy and silent profile as the mood turns more solemn. I am saddened when I think of the time when we were giving each other the cold shoulder, but now that the Dragon God is on the loose, Ning's future is unpredictable, and my reign is in an in a precarious state. I really don't have the energy to be reprimanded. It surprises me when Wu Sushu turns around with a look of exhaustion on his face. The bags and wrinkles under his eyes make him look older by a few years. Prime Minister, you look like you also have gotten very little rest. Please, take a seat before we begin. Wu Sushu shakes his head and sighs softly. Shaojun I doubted it when you told me that apparently Yi Guan did some thingies and you were hiding things from me, but I'll let it slide. Never. What? Please, carry on, Prime Minister. We had planned to the now that Yi Guang is back and the Dragon God has weakened, I think that there is still a chance for success. Xian Wang Chu Shi Shi Jiao Dai De Liang Jian Shi. 
I remember. To find the sacred artifact that will help us kill the dragon god. And... That's a lot of dots. Do you mean you want me to continue the bloodline? <gasps> he wants us to get braggy! Who, who... Who... Is this the path that we can now take for the romance? Can I choose now? Can it please be Yi Guang? <laughs> I would not mind if he, um... Did some things. You... You... I raise a trembling finger at Wu Sushu, and I'm so angry that I cannot continue what I'm about to say. He wants us to get plaggy. You know very well that we will not endure the insults that we have faced three years ago. Oh my god! He, he's telling us just to get knocked up by anybody! You disrespectful jerk! Who do you take us for? I pick up my pillow and toss it angrily at Wusushu. He doesn't try to defend himself or avoid it. It is almost as if he doesn't care that I'm so angry to the point of losing my mind. Make me. You say I cannot choose him? I will. I'll, I'll have all three of them. Try me. <laughs> Guo Zheng and Yi Guang have both put their lives on the line for us. Why are you still so sub stubbornly suspicious of them? Have you not learned from their actions? That is a different matter altogether. It was clearly your fault and my father's fault for not checking him out properly. And now you want us to sacrifice ourselves for your mistake and also our, your obsession with the royal bloodline? So you want me to be out of commission for, uh, I don't know the proper amount of time, but it's less than nine months. Because like the first month or two, there isn't that much problems, but like, you want us out of commission for months? Plan for the long term? <laughs> we do not know how soon our life will come to an end, so what is this long term you speak of? I pull apart the front of my clothes to reveal the seal on my chest. Ever since the battle at Tiger Hill, the pain in my chest has been more frequent. Even without looking at it, I know that it has gotten worse. Do you see this? I am already a dead man walking. Just making my life more miserable than it already is make you happy? Did I say something wrong? For you to insult me like this, am I still human in your eyes? Wu Shishu's cold demeanor and expressionless face suddenly falls. Seeing that, I feel strangely and sadistically joyful. If I could, I would let out all my repressed anger and hate in one go. The world is an unforgiving place. One slip-up could cause you misery for years to come. Wu Sushu, all you speak about now is how I can win or lose. There is no one who does not have an ulterior motive in your eyes. <laughs> Dare I ask what do you really want? In this world that is full of evil, you are alone, without friends or family, and you surrender yourself with nothing but suspicion. What has made you happy so far? Or all your... Oh my goodness, I was on a roll. Or... Or... Are all those... All, all my... Ah, 
I was on a roll and then I like messed up. What the frick? Are all these exactly what you wish for? Say it louder. <laughs> on your knees. Say it louder. <laughs> Wushishu interrupts me with a look so furious that it seems like fire is coming out of his eyes. In just that split moment, that tall, handsome, confident, and strapping Prime Minister has become a withered old man. My heart lurches in my chest as I stretch out a hand to reach for Wu Shishu, but he takes a step back. Oof. I love this drama. <laughs> Prime Minister, I, I... What did I say just now? Although I'm angry at Wu Sushu's domineering attitude and his intimidating ways, I still cannot. I still cannot. Cannot ignore the fact that if it wasn't for him exhausting himself at protecting and supporting me, I would have died three years ago. Anyone on earth can reprimand Wu Sushu, but I alone do not have the right to do so. It's my. It's my fault. For speaking out of turn. Wu Shishu only laughs bleakly and says nothing. I suddenly feel my nose redden and I just want to cry long and hard. I just don't want to be a puppet. It's not wrong to wish that, but. But. Not now! Go away! Did we not tell you to go and rest? Now's not the time! We are coming. Please don't take that out of context, please. For the love of all that is holy, please do not take that out of context. <laughs> Chen Feng helps me put on my socks and shoes and waits for me to get up, while Wu Shishu has wordlessly left my chamber. I gingerly sit up on my bed as a sudden bout of exhaustion comes over me. Forget it. It is too late. Let's go tomorrow. I'm still feeling depressed over the quarrel I had with the Prime Minister yesterday. Needing some good news to boost my spirits, I make my way to see Xiao Jiang early this morning. I first thought that she was a cute, bubbly girl that has been spoiled and sheltered, but I did not expect her to kneel on her bed and bow to me when she sees me. You are welcome, Princess. Since you have just woken up, please let us know if you need anything. That is only natural. Chen Feng. I call for Chen Feng out of habit as Xiao Jiang curiously looked behind me. The maids have already left when I came in, so it was only Xiao Jiang and I in the room, alone. Wu Shao Jun. Ever since he came out of the dark array, he has not been able to rest well. We ordered him to rest in his room for a day. Wait, does this mean that the princess still remembers Chen Feng from the time the two of you were in the dark array? It was then that Yi Guang comes in and gives me a warm smile. But under Xiao Jiang's gaze, he seems to have remembered something and greets me with a hand-on-hand -hand salute. 
少君，虎丘的事情暂时可告一段落，我便回来了。刚刚我给少将公子把过脉，他除了需要好好吃饭以外，已经不需要其他诊治了。Talking about Tiger Hill, will the princess kindly tell us what happened to you at Tiger Hill? 我与侍卫本来在姑苏城边游玩，忽然感知到强烈的邪气，在离都城这么近的地方，我实在好奇。Ah, I see, I see. Tiger Hill is heavily guarded, so how did you manage to bypass my security to get up there? If I were the Lord, I would have known that that was a holy temple, and I would not have snuck up there. I'm sorry, Wu Xiaojun. It's okay. You can get away with it. That is fine, since you did not know any better. After all, you were there with good intentions. 公子到了祭庙后，又看见了什么？我看见一群黑衣巫祝在举行血祭，我感觉打不过，就想逃走，却被他们抓住了。虽然有朱雀剑的保护，我没受伤，没想到黑衣人对神剑起了贪念，对我下了咒。那群巫祝当中，是不是有个俊秀的少年？嗯，他和其他人不太一样。虽然漂亮，却有种可怕的感觉。嗯、Princess Xiaodang is indeed an outstanding mage to be able to see through Chen Dan's disguise. 是，是吗<笑> ？When we rushed to Tiger Hill, your bodyguard and the men in black were already dead. Even Chen Dan was injured. Chen Dan was probably worried that his ploy would come to light when he failed to kill you, so he sacrificed some of his underlings to make his deception more convincing. This Zheng Dan is too cold. Yeah. Just because he is a Hua Sheng Yun Chang, some things are not so easy. Yi Guan smiles at Xiao Jiang, and she blushes to the point of not being able to say a word. I don't know why she is acting so shy. Maybe it is simply because Xiao Jiang is a maiden who is not used to talking to a mature young man like Yi Guang. I quickly changed the topic. Princess Xiao Jiang, thank you very much for giving me the details about your kidnapping. So, what do you intend to do next? I left home already a few weeks ago. I'm preparing to meet with Gongsun Prince and take a flight back home. We will send someone to escort Mr. Gongsun to the palace. Thank you, Wu Xiaojun. Also, thank you for coming so many times. You are welcome. I. But this time, it will be better than the promise. Meet the Wuxi Zhen Meng. Give the Hundred Years Good Luck. When I see Xiao Jiang being all shy, a sudden thought occurs to me. I am not only a man in her eyes, but also her fiance. With that thought, I begin to feel awkward. Mr. Gongsu was held back from returning his report on his mission due to our own reasons. We hope that Princess Xiaojiang will not blame us for that. On that note, we hope that you will rest well before you begin your journey. We will. Ah, Shao Jun, Shao Deng. I have one thing I want to ask Shao Jiang Gongsu. That bow dragon sword, is it suitable for Lai Yi? I'm assuming it's passed down in her family or something because she's wearing oranges. This bow dragon is a legendary dragon sword. 据说能够辟邪，所以我才带上了它。没想到这次还真的救了我。I knew it. I'm so smart. He. <laughs> Yi Guang nods his head and takes out a note written on a piece of cloth with something drawn with ink on it. 那你可曾见过这个纹路？嗯，看起来有点眼熟。Xiao Jiang holds up the sacred dagger next to the piece of cloth and looks at the carving of phoenix while comparing it to the pattern. 和剑上的纹路很相似，但又不完全一样。我应该没在别墅见过。多谢公子。Xiao Jiang has spoken with us for a while now, as she seems to be getting tired, and I still feel awkward about our engagement. I pull Yi Guan away as we say our goodbyes. Yi Guan, you were also hurt in the dark array. Why don't you get some more rest? You're so anxious to bring me out. It's because you're concerned about me. 
Of course. Of course I would, you know. Since you still have a sense of humor, it seems like your injuries aren't serious enough for me to worry about. Yi Guan points a finger at my chest, and I give him a bitter smile as I shake my head. What else is there to say? Ever since the Dragon God escaped from the Sword Pond, the seal would of course get from bad to worse. Doesn't the White Tiger need to return to the Sacred Ding? It is all my fault for being so slow-witted. Just how many people have been hurt by Chen Dan as its dark ray these past few years? What is the price for using such forceful methods? Are such strong armed methods common? Hateful demon! I hit the banister in anger. <laughs> Below me lies the peaceful and beautiful city of Gushu. Unbeknownst to them, destruction and danger could come at a moment's notice. I don't know how I can kill that monster for ruining the sacred ding. Oh? Is there something you are not telling me? For you laugh or for you to laugh so mysteriously? So what do you need me to do? Ah, fine. I can only nod my head with a bitter chuckle. After my argument with Wu Shushu, I could not sleep well, and Yi Guan must have noticed that I was not all there today. What? How do I know which one to choose? How do I know which one to choose? I'm gonna tell him. Yi Guan is the only person I can truly confide in. I felt guilty about Wu Shushu and the dilemma I am currently trapped in. The Prime Minister hopes that I will make sacrifices for my kingdom, but there are things that I really do not want to do. So we had a bitter quarrel over it. The king and the kingdom should be one and the same, yet yeah, I am bleh, bleh, yet I am too selfish to be a good king, and I am unworthy of the Prime Minister's faith in me. Oh, why? Oh my goodness, they're giving me so many choices suddenly. Uh Uh, I don't know what to go for. Um, out of kindness or because you want to do what's right? I'm gonna say out of kindness because he originally was gonna stay at the village, which is what he thought was right. And I feel like this is like a loaded statement. Like, oh, if you didn't stay at the village, what you were doing was wrong. So I'll, I'll say out of kindness. If you let me drag you into this, you only suffer. But you've always been kind, even as a child, and worried about me as a friend. You couldn't even turn a blind eye to the wounded soldiers of Yue, much less to the people of Anung. 
，过于博爱了。I did not mean it like that. You have never gone easy on the Dragon God's followers. I meant that as a doctor, you have always put others before yourself. I don't know what I'm saying. Hey, you did this on purpose. It's true that the standards of standards of morality have been falling. You were so honest when you were young, and now that you've grown up, you have gotten good at teasing others. It's fine. Everything's fine. Yi Guang shoots me a broad and confident smile. Feels like we have gone back to our carefree childhood days. Yi Guang has always been kind and selfless. Self, selfless. Yeah. Even after I decided to risk our lives to rescue Cheng Feng, he still stood by me. I hope that after Cheng Feng recovers, the three of us will be able to set sail on the Five Lakes again. However, it remains an unreachable dream as long as the Dragon God's curse is unbroken. Yi Guang, sometimes I wish I could still be that Li from your youth. But the things that we wish for that don't come true outnumber the things that do. If you are still that time, I will not be able to share with him the pain that he has suffered. I will not be able to share with him the pain that he has suffered. Because I am the king of Neng? Yes, but not. With your leadership, you can be able to get rid of the Chen Feng. 舍弃筑罗村的老乡，你却一次次舍命相救。虽然莽撞了些，但吴王心中有仁有义，是施一光心甘情愿侍奉的君王。啊啊！一光啊！我想，五相国阅历丰富，一定也能看到你的优点。而且你能成为人君，也是五相国这么些年一直尽心尽力教导的结果。嗯，在固执程度上，你们也不愧是师徒，吵架肯定难免的。Are you trying to praise me or hurt my feelings? 我只是实话实说。I take a deep breath as I gaze into the distance at the pros prosperous city by the river. Every inch of the river and hills is the result of the hard work that generations of the people of Nung had put in. It is a great honor to be their king. That is why I should do my best to be a competent king. Thank you, Yi Guang. I trust you, and I trust the Prime Minister. That is why I will not distance nor take the side of any one of you. I will instead close the gap between everyone, and we will work together to break the sacred vow and bring peace to the kingdom of Nung. Yi Guang bows to me with a hand-on-hand -hand salute, not just out of friendship, but also out of respect and loyalty. I suddenly feel that our time as children is truly in the past, and will no longer overlap my visions of the future. Chapter nine, and that is all for today's stream. I did not expect it to take as long as it did. Uh, right click, right click, save, save. I actually, I want to save it on another slot just in case of those um two choices that I had to make. <laughs> I was not expecting those two. Oh my goodness, so much treachery, so much trickery, so much of everything. I I I'm at a loss for words. I almost cried. I laughed like so much, so much during this one stream, and it was two hours and twenty minutes long. I think that's the longest the two chapters have been. So this must have been like intense. Ooh. Anyway, uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. title screen. Yes, I would like to 
and once again, it shrinks back to windowed mode. I would like you to go back to full mode, please. <laughs> Config full. There we go. Oop. Oh my goodness. That was a lot. That was a lot. Which means that next weekend, uh, we'll be doing chapter 9 and chapter 10, and that will be it of this playthrough. Which is a little saddening. I mean, I'll still, I'll still be playing it afterwards, like continuing on whatever chapters are left over. But this is as much as I can show you guys, and it'll end next weekend. I apologize, but it is what it is. But I hope, I hope you enjoyed the stream. I hope you enjoyed the video or whatever. Um, uh, I'm not 100 percent sure what else to say. Uh, oh wait, nope. Tomorrow, I will be starting my stream an hour earlier. I have plans in the morning, but also with this uh, game that I want to play tomorrow, I don't know how long it's going to be. I'm going to assume that it's four hours long, and I have my little my little Q and A, you know, podcast esque kind of stream with Sakura, and um, I don't know what she goes by, but I'll call her Rotten for right now. Uh, I have a little thingy with them at 8 p.m. EST. So I'm I'm hoping that I'll be able to rest like maybe an hour-ish after I finish my game before I could before I go over and talk with them. So <sighs> thank you all so much. I love you all. Bye-bye. <laughs>